Just like Super Mario Brothers for the NES changed the face of the video game industry, Super Mario World forever changed the Mario series. With countless additions, some of which becoming staples of the franchise, Super Mario World brought Nintendo's prized mascot into a new era of gaming. New places, enemies, challenges, and even friends made this next-gen version one of the most memorable Mario installments of the entire series. I'm Nikki. I'm Cade with Super Coin Crew, where it's non-stop Nintendo, and we'll be leaving no question blocks unchecked as we make our way through 107 facts you should know about Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. Let's get started. Number 1. Super Mario World was released in 1991 in North America. Number 2. One year earlier in 1990, the game came out in Japan, but with the title Super Mario Brothers 4, Super Mario World. So if you were ever wondering why Nintendo never made Super Mario Brothers 4, the answer is that they did. Number 3. When Super Mario World was released, it had a retail price tag of $24.99, and I can tell you one thing, my copy has earned every penny tenfold. Number 4. Despite having the main character potentially eaten by carnivorous plants, blown away by torpedoes, disintegrated in lava, amongst many other outcomes, Super Mario World is still rated E for everyone, because everyone should play this game. Number 5. Super Mario World features 16-bit graphics and stereo sound, which was the best available at the time of release. This stuff blew people's minds. Hey man, it was the 90s, am I right? Number 6. Super Mario World took 3 years to develop with a team of 16 people. That's over 10 more members than Super Mario Brothers, and double that of Super Mario Brothers 3. Number 7. Super Mario World was included in a special version of Super Mario All-Stars, titled Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World in 1993. This was also bundled with the Super NES Mario set. Number 8. Super Mario World is the 6th best-selling Mario game with over 20 million units sold. The original Super Mario Brothers still holds the number one spot with nearly double the sales of Super Mario World. Very impressive. Number 9. With that impressive 20.6 million units sold, Super Mario World takes the crown for best-selling Super Nintendo game, with Super Mario All-Stars in a distant second, having only 10.5 million. Number 10. Before starting work on Super Mario World, the development team actually ported Super Mario Brothers 3 over to the Super Famicom as a hardware experiment. In a very early interview, Miyamoto states that doing so made them realize they couldn't just make another Mario game. It had to be new and take full advantage of the new hardware. Number 11. In the same interview, Miyamoto said with the original Super Mario Brothers, he was trying to make a game that felt, quote, athletic, but with the later games, Super Mario Brothers 3 and Super Mario World, he was more focused on new game elements and final polish. Number 12. Super Mario World was on a larger cartridge compared to earlier releases, a whopping 4 megabytes up from the 3 megabytes used for Super Mario Brothers 3. The added color capabilities of the new system made memory conservation just as important as before. Number 13. The original controls for Mario's parachuting cape were different during development and considered a bit too difficult to handle by playtesters, so the team tweaked them for easier playability. Number 14. Where Super Mario Brothers 3 was targeted toward veteran Mario players, Super Mario World took into consideration the amount of beginners that be playing it as their first in the series. This made for a game that had a very nice difficulty curve along with bonus objectives and secrets to satisfy more skilled players. Number 15. Shigeru Miyamoto was the producer for Super Mario World and led the Nintendo EAD team. Number 16. Super Mario World was directed by Takashi Tezuka, whom had previously directed Super Mario Bros. 2, 3, and The Legend of Zelda. Number 17. Shigafumi Hino is credited with the final design of Yoshi. Believe it or not, Super Mario World was the first game Hino worked on. Number 18. Koji Kondo solely composed all the Super Mario World music using only an electric keyboard, and now he's conducting full orchestras for game soundtracks. Oh, how the times have changed. Number 19. Some of the game's background tracks are really just remixed versions of the same melody. There's only so much you can do with an old school Casio. Number 20. In the special world zone, if you wait in the overworld map for about 30 seconds, a remix to the original Super Mario Brothers theme will be played. Number 21. The game follows your standard Mario series structure of Princess Peach being kidnapped by Bowser and the Mario Brothers traveling all over the place to rescue her. Number 22. Part of the game's appeal is its complex linear structure, meaning there are multiple paths crossing seven worlds to reach the end. The stages with red dots have multiple routes. Number 23. The stages marked in red can be completed in two ways. Of course, there's the normal goal at the end of the stage, but there's also a secret exit. On some of these levels, players must find a key hidden somewhere in the level and bring it to a secret keyhole. Doing so will lead them down an alternate path. Number 24. Super Mario World features three save profiles. However, the game can only be saved after beating a ghost house or castle stage, and your total number of lives aren't kept. However, this was changed for the Game Boy Advance version. Number 25. The Super Leaf power-up from Super Mario Bros. 3 was going to reappear in Super Mario World, but instead, Nintendo introduced a brand new item, the Cape Feather, which gives Mario a yellow cape and allows him to fly through the air. Gotta get my hands on one of those.
those. Number 26. When using the cape, if you open it up while in the air, it acts as a parachute. I'm still not 100% what causes the cape to stick to Mario's shoes. Can anyone please explain that to me? Number 27. None of the costume power-ups that were introduced in Super Mario Bros. 3 were brought into Super Mario World. The frog suit, tanuki suit, and hammer suit were all left out. Number 28. In the North American release of Super Mario World, the strange round Goombas are actually called Goombas, according to the manual. But in Japan, they actually have different names. In Japanese, the original Goomba is called Karibo, while the Super Mario World version is called Kuriban. Number 29. Unlike the original, the Super Mario World Goomba acts more like a Koopa in the sense that they are not killed when jumped on. Instead, they are flipped over and can be tossed around. Number 30. The Super Mario World Goomba was never given any distinction in the US until Super Mario 3D World for the Wii U when they were given the name Galoomba. Number 31. Interestingly enough, Kuriba loosely translates to, quote, chestnut people, despite that they were designed after shiitake mushrooms. Number 32. Super Mario World takes place in Dinosaur Land rather than the Mushroom Kingdom, and it's the first game to introduce Yoshi. Number 33. Miyamoto wanted the character of Yoshi to be created as far back as the original Super Mario Brothers, but it wasn't possible due to limitations with the NES's hardware. He actually had a sketch of Mario writing a very different yet familiar Yoshi type creature at his desk for five years before it became a reality. Number 34. Dolphins were introduced in Super Mario World. They may look familiar because they appear in various Mario parties as well as Mario Kart 8. Number 35. None of the Koopalings' in-game sprites match their artwork in the manual. Instead, most of them have similar palettes to regular Koopas. Number 36. Similarly, Bowser's palette doesn't match his traditional color scheme either. Instead of his yellow body, it is noticeably green like the top of his head. Number 37. Super Mario World is the first game in the Mario series to include spin jumping. It is awesome. Number 38. Speaking of spin jumps, Super Mario World is one of the few Mario games that lets you spin jump on spikes. Doing so actually gets you to some secret areas. Number 39. Torpedo Ted was introduced as an underwater counterpart to Bullet Bill in Super Mario World. Many people speculate that their names are a reference to the film Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, but in Japan their names are Kira and Torpedo, meaning Killer and Torpedo. So if it is a reference, it was made when the game was being localized for the North American market. Number 40. Reznor are a new boss-like enemies found in the fortresses of Super Mario World. They appear as four fire-breathing triceratops hanging out on rotating platforms. In the manual, it says that the poor dinos were cursed to do Bowser's bidding. Number 41. When the Koopalings are defeated, Morton, Ludwig, and Roy go spiraling into the background wall with a puff of smoke, while Iggy, Lemmy, Wendy, and Larry fall into the lava. Number 42. The green fire-breathing creatures in Super Mario World are called Dino Rhinos and Dino Torches. Though their first appearance was in Super Mario World, in the Super Mario All-Stars and Super Mario Advance 4 versions of Super Mario Bros. 3, the King of World 3 is actually turned into a purple version of this enemy. Number 43. Those lava dinosaurs that chomp at Mario when he's on skull wraps are called Blargs. Blargs only come back in Yoshi's story with a completely different look. Pro tip, Blargs can be eaten by Yoshi, but it's pretty tough to pull off. Number 44. Everyone knows about the 1-Up Mushroom, but did you know that starting with Super Mario World, there are super rare 3-Up Moons? They are little smiling, waxing crescent moons, mostly hidden appropriately amongst the clouds. Number 45. The Super Mario World manual states that the sunken ship you have to swim through to get to World 7 is actually a destroyed Koopa airship from Super Mario Bros. 3. Does that mean all the Boos and Eerie on board were once Koopas? Number 46. Luigi's Sprite in Super Mario World was originally just a green version of Mario. However, in the All-Stars version of the game, Luigi got his own original design, which is just what he deserves, because he's Luigi. Number 47. The logo on the door of Yoshi's mailbox is the same logo used by Japan's Postal Service. Now that's some cool attention to detail. Number 48. In the special world, the design at the top of the map is actually the Super Famicom logo. Number 49. The storage box was added in Super Mario World. If a player receives an extra item, it is stored in a box in the upper part of the screen and will be dropped after losing your power-up. Players could also manually drop the stored item by pressing select. Number 50. The amazing Flying Hammer Brother takes the place of the regular Hammer Brothers in Super Mario World. Much like their predecessor, they toss hammers around, but this time while flying around on winged blocks. They are a fun new challenge, however, their only reappearance is in Super Princess Peach. Number 51. The small grassy pond of Kappa Mountain at the start of the game is a reference to Kappa of Japanese folklore. Often it is depicted as a small lizard-like humanoid with a small pool of water on its head, which, if spilled, weakens the creature. Number 52. If you feed Yoshi 10 red berries, you will be rewarded with a super mushroom. And to think this whole time I thought the red berries were useless. Number 53. Yoshis are hidden in many blocks around Dinosaur Land. If a player already has a Yoshi, a 1-Up will hatch from the egg instead. Number 54. For some reason, the game's ending depicts Mario and Luigi 
Luigi with red and green shoes, despite usually being seen with brown shoes. Maybe the fancy colored kicks are safe for photo ops. No one wants to ruin their good shoes while adventuring. I can attest to that. Number 55. Wondering where the treacherous buzz saws in Super Mario Maker came from? The answer is Super Mario World. And guess what? They were just as bad. Number 56. Super Mario World introduced players to Magic Koopa, a group of wand-wielding Koopas that can turn blocks into enemies. Number 57. In Japan, Magic Koopa are known as Kamek. Does that name ring a bell? It should because since Yoshi's Island, Kamek has been the poster Koopa for the Magic Koopa in Western releases. Often, if a Magic Koopa is unnamed, it is referred to as Kamek due to their similarities. Number 58. Spike Tots make their debut in Super Mario World and are shown having six legs. In every other appearance, they've had four legs like their Buzzy Beetle relatives. Not to get them confused with Spinies because they have one spike versus several spikes. Number 59. Charging Trucks also make a first appearance in Super Mario World but then sort of vanish until the revival in Super Mario 3D World. They're back, baby. Number 60. In the Super Mario World manual, the Charging Trucks are shown with blue uniforms but their in-game sprites wear green. This was changed back to blue when they came back for Super Mario 3D World. Number 61. The title screen's demo is an unfinished version of the fifth level of Special World. Number 62. In Japan, the forced evolution of Super Mario World and the Lost Woods of the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time share the same name, Mayoi no Mori, which translates to Lost Forest. Number 63. Dragon coins are the large, oval, Yoshi-imprinted coins found in almost every level and are exclusive to Super Mario World. If you collect five of them, you'll be rewarded with an extra life. One up. Number 64. In Super Mario Advance 2, Super Mario Mario World, dragon coins were added to castles, fortresses, and ghost houses. If you collect every dragon coin in every level, they will change into peach coins. Number 65. Due to additions, some of the levels in Super Mario Advance 2 are slightly different than they were in the Super Nintendo version of the game. Number 66. In the Super Nintendo version, Bowser's arms are green, while in the Game Boy Advance version, his arms are a yellowish color. Number 67. Thankfully, the opposite happens with Yoshi, whose arms were originally orange, then changed to match his body for the Game Boy Advance release, and later in Super Mario Maker. Seriously, once you notice that Yoshi has orange arms in the Super Nintendo version, it'll be all you see. Number 68. Star World 3 is one of the shortest levels in any Mario game. Number 69. An added mechanic that totally blew my mind as a kid was climbing around on the wired fences and hitting the doors to switch sides. This may seem like nothing to younger gamers, but when my friends and I got to the first castle featuring these things, we actually freaked out over all the different options we had while traversing the Koopa infested wires. Number 70. Speaking of the fence dwelling Koopa, did you know that the color of their shells signal how they act? Green-shelled Koopa move at a slow pace, while red-shelled Koopa move horizontally much faster. Thankfully, a good tap on the head or whack from the opposite side of the fence takes care of either of them. No problem. Number 71. Rip Van Fish was a new enemy to the Mario series in Super Mario World. The sleepy fish normally chases after Mario when it is woken up, but if he has the star power up, they will actually try to escape his sparkling rampage. His name is also a reference to Rip Van Winkle, a tale about a man sleeping for 20 years. Number 72. Super Mario World is the first game in the Mario franchise to give the sprites of Mario, Luigi, and Peach their white gloves. Up until this point, they had been barehanded. Number 73. The Koopa Clown car made its debut in Super Mario World. The final fight with Bowser has them flying around in the castle's roof while dropping big steelies, mecha Koopas, and fireballs on Mario or Luigi. What's really interesting about the Koopa Clown car is that it shows emotions to the point of shedding a tear when defeated. Is this a living creature? What's the deal? Number 74. One of the most notable changes made in Super Mario World is the new and improved Koopa Troopa. This is the first game that turns the basic crawling turtle into a bipedal enemy with personality. When Mario jumps on a Koopa, it now pops out of its shell and is briefly dazed. If left unattended, the Koopa will go get its shell back to cover up its exposed body. Number 75. The giant gates are new to the Mario series as well. They are basically a combination of the classic flagpole and the goal roulette from Super Mario Bros. 3 in the sense that a player has not to only try and hit the goal as high as possible but also time the jump based on the moving post. Number 76. Yoshi can actually say more than just Yoshi. When Mario first releases his green skin comrade from its egg, it thanks him, saying that on his way to save his friends, Bowser trapped him. His verbal skills are shown again in games such as Paper Mario and the Mario and Luigi series. Number 77. Green Yoshi gains unique attacks based on what color shells he has in his mouth. If Yoshi eats a red shell, spitting will shoot out three fireballs. A yellow shell will cause Yoshi to make a cloud of harmful sand appear when bouncing off the ground. And finally, if Yoshi eats a blue shell, he can fly for a bit by pressing B. Number 78. Alternatively, red, yellow, and blue Yoshis can be raised by feeding them five enemies. Once large, they have the respective power based on their color no matter what shell they have eaten. Meeting red Yoshi will always breathe fire,
air and Blue Yoshi will always fly. Number 79. Mario and Luigi aren't the only ones that take advantage of the cape feather. If a Koopa gets a hold of the magic cape, it'll ditch its shell and fly around. Look how happy it is in the manual. Why would Mario want to ruin its fun? Number 80. Super Mario World added a few enlarged versions of classic enemies such as Bonsai Bill and Big Boo, both of which act similar to their tiny equivalents. Number 81. The horned purple dragon creature that made its first appearance in Super Mario World is called a Rex, named after the Tyrannosaurus Rex. They appear in the first level and act sort of like this game's Goomba, in the sense that they teach you a brand new mechanic. Veteran and even new players instinctively bounce on Rex, which doesn't kill it, but instead squishes him down accordion style and actually causes it to move quicker. If a player wants to take out the purple foe, they must learn to use the newly introduced spin jump attack. Number 82. Another newly added enemy that totally caught me off guard as a kid was Monty, aka those moles that pop out of the ground in walls. I can't tell you the amount of times I was taken out by one of those guys, but listen, they are one of my favorite enemies in any Mario game. Number 83. The seven main worlds of Super Mario World are Yoshi's Island, Donut Plains, Vanilla Dome, Cookie Mountain, Forest of Illusion, Chocolate Island, and the Valley of Bowser. Is anyone else hungry all of a sudden? Number 84. In order to progress to the next level on Star Road, a player must find the keyhole exit except for World 5. Number 85. In Star Road World 5, the keyhole exit brings the player to the special stage. Number 86. The levels in Special World all have super 90s names, including Gnarly, Tubular, Way Cool, Awesome, Groovy, Mondo, Outrageous, and Funky. And in my opinion, that's just radical. Number 87. In the Japanese release, the names of special levels share names. Fun Course, Specialist Course, Championship Course, and my favorite, even the Mario Staff is Shocked Course. Each have two levels attributed to them. Number 88. In the US and PAL versions of the game, players can re-enter beaten castles by pressing the L and R buttons simultaneously. This won't work on the Japanese version of the game. Number 89. There is a grand total of 96 exits in the game. Number 90. It's possible to reach the end of the game in just 12 stages if you charge straight through the Star Road route. Number 91. Taking the 12 stage route, Super Mario World was finished in under 9 minutes and 48 seconds. Wow. Number 92. After beating the special world, players are rewarded with a change of scenery in the world map, dubbed Fall or Autumn due to the changed colors of Dinosaur Land. Number 93. Also during Fall, some enemy sprites are changed. The Koopa Troopas ditch their shells and begin wearing large masks that sort of look like varying colors of Mario. Maybe they put on human disguises in hopes that Mario ignores them seeing as their attempts at stopping him failed. Number 94. Another change during Fall is that Bullet Bills transform into Pidget Bills, resembling the digits of Super Mario Bros. 2. Number 95. A cartoon adaptation loosely based on Super Mario World titled Captain N and the New Super Mario World was produced by Deke Entertainment shortly after the release of the game. The series had 13 episodes. Number 96. The fastest someone has found all 96 exits is an impressive 1 hour, 23 minutes, and 24 seconds. Number 97. Super Mario World was remade for the Nintendo Game Boy Advance as the second installment of the Super Mario Advance series. Number 98. Super Mario Advance 2 Super Mario World included a new intro in which Mario and Luigi flaunt their sweet cape skills for Peach. Upon returning, they find Peach is missing. Way to go, guys. That's what you get for showing off. Number 99. The Game Boy Advance remake also added voice acting by the legendary Charles Martinet. Definitely check out Super Coin Crew's interview with the legendary Charles Martinet. Number 100. In the original Super Mario World, Mario and Luigi played identically. But in Super Mario Advance 2 Super Mario World, Luigi became a little harder to handle, but has a distinctly higher jump. Number 101. A demo for Super Mario World was included in Super Smash Bros. Brawl for the Wii. To unlock the demo, all you have to do is brawl on Yoshi's Island three times. Number 102. Yoshi's Island is actually Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Number 103. The final issue of Nintendo Power listed Super Mario World as the fifth greatest game of all time. I gotta say, I definitely agree. Number 104. Super Mario World was one of the first games to be announced for the Wii's Virtual Console and was added in February of 2007. Number Number 105. In April of 2013, the Wii U also received Super Mario World on the Virtual Console and let players play either on the television or the Wii U gamepad. Number 106. Super Mario World was ranked 8th on Nintendo Power's Top 200 Games list and won Nintendo Power's Game of the Year award in 1991. Now you're playing with power. Number 107. Metacritic lists Super Mario World as the 4th best Mario game ever, falling behind Super Mario 64, Super Mario Brothers, and Super Mario Galaxy. Thanks for watching Super Coin Crew's 107 Facts you should know about Super Mario World. Have a fact we left out? Well, let us know in the comments along with what we should cover next. If you're craving more trivia, check out some of our other fact videos here on Super Coin Crew where it's non-stop Nintendo. Make sure to subscribe so you'll never miss one. Thanks for watching.